we have actually discussed about the main theme what actually happened in this uh, short story we discussed about hh H. munro's character and i have explained to you that from this short story we can clearly identify hh uh, H. munro's suffocative childhood whatever the negative impressions that he had to undergo as a small boy in his life all these things are actually collectively presented in this short story and furthermore i have explained to you that when you refer to this short story you have to remember the main theme that the writer tries to explain here is that there are a certain children who are much more smarter than adults even though adults are thinking that they are wiser they are better they are knowledgeable than the children there are a certain children who are much more smarter than them who are much more wiser than them so the main idea or the main uh, moral message given by the writer is that for adults as well as for the parents the uh, children are a set of people who are with lot of curiosity and as adults as experienced adults we have to always enhance their curiosity enhance their imaginative uh, imagination um, and uh, their cognitive skills rather than destroying that right rather destroying that so we should not destroy that we have to always support that that is the idea actually given here in this short story so we started the short story last week uh, we discussed about the main characters basically we identified two characters nicholas and nicholas's aunt right so nicholas can be identified as the hero or else we call the protagonist of the character and aunt can be identified as the antagonist or else as we call the villain of the drama so what happens early in the morning nicholas puts a frog into his bread and milk he actually uh, continuously proving the fact that there is a frog in my bread and milk as a result of that i can't drink that so aunt is the person who actually made this so she vehemently refuses the idea saying that you are a liar you are talking utter nonsense you should not talk like that uh, because children are actually lying right that is the idea that almost all the adults had at that time period but however nicholas actually did the action in order to prove that aunt cannot be always correct so in front of breakfast table near the breakfast table he proved in front of each and every one that aunt is wrong because when aunt came and checked but she uh, saw there is a frog in his bread and milk right so he became a very successful uh, person at that time period so nicholas's ability and nicholas's talent can be seen in the first paragraph itself so as a result of that what happened now aunt is actually organizing a organizing kind of an expedition kind of a trip uh, to the jackbroff beach all the other children can enjoy the trip they can join the trip but uh, they can join the trip but nicholas is in disgrace because of the behavior that he uh, showed uh, near the breakfast table at the breakfast table as a result of that uh, he will be excluded all the other children will be uh, in, according to her opinion all the other children will go to the jackbroff beach and they will enjoy so again we can clearly understand that what kind of punishment is actually given by this aunt it is actually kind of a mental torture it is not a physical punishment because when she um, uh, what do you call explains uh, how the children uh, how how will these children will uh, enjoy and what kind of weather will be there so she thought that nicholas will be upset it will affect nicholas mentally because all the other children can join the trip but nicholas will uh, stay at home alone but something totally different actually occurred as nicholas suggested all the children who went to the jackbroff beach they suffocated but at that time period nicholas stayed in the house and he entered to the lumber room and he enjoyed himself right so this is the idea actually given here this is the major idea that we have um, that we have identified up to now so make sure to remember the conflict between aunt and nicholas whatever the qualities that we can see in nicholas the imaginative ability the cognitive skills intelligence uh all these qualities cannot be seen in the aunt right so they are opposite characters whatever the qualities that we can see in nicholas's character cannot be seen in aunt's character so here we can clearly understand hh H. munro or saki is deliberately uh trying to uh, show us the fact that uh, adults are not uh, brave adults are not imaginative adults are not uh, capable of doing something but when it comes to children children have children have got all these abilities that is the idea he wanted to emphasize so we have discussed about the fourth paragraph where in the fourth paragraph uh, we discussed about the behavior of the aunt 
right behavior of the aunt and how not only nicholas but also the other children suffocated inside this house the aunt did not show proper attention to the needs and wants of the children so as a result of that aunt can be identified as a character who cannot understand the child upbringing the child upbringing is not actually understood by her so this is the idea that hh H. munro tries to bring here there are a certain adults there are a certain parents even though they are parents even though they are adults they don't have any idea whatsoever how to bring up a child how to solve the problems actually uh, how to solve the questions asked by children right how to accept their cognitive abilities how to answer their questions there are a certain adults who are incapable of doing that so hh uh, H. H. munro is actually asking the question or questioning from the society uh, since you are an adult don't think that you have that capability of maintaining a child or else oh, you don't have sometimes some sometimes some kind of experience to up, uh, what kind of upbringing that you have to practice in order to uh, deal with the child right that is the idea so we have discussed about that so here we discussed that what kind of punishments actually given by the aunt this expedition is not something uh, uh, new for them right usually whenever uh, some child uh, did some kind of a mistake some kind of an offense uh, the basic behavior of the aunt is that she will definitely uh, organize an expedition basically she had only two places to go either to the beach or else to the circus so children also a uh, little bit children uh, all children also felt little bit boring to go to these places because whatever said and done at the end of the day she had only two options either they will go to the beach or else they will go to the circus so nicholas knew about that and the most important part is that even though aunt thought that nicholas will be upset even though aunt is under the impression that definitely nicholas will suffer that type of thing did not happen here so this clearly shows us what kind of talent possessed by nicholas we will discuss that part as well right so if you have any um, exactly even parents should be educated to handle children exactly mama eka thamai puthe kiyuwe meke hondara mataka tiya ganna eka harima wedaga hh munro tries to give the message that since you have children it doesn't it doesn't make you a parent biologically you may have children right biologically you may have children but in order to become a parent it will take some time period it will take some time period since you had a child biologically it doesn't make you a parent a parent is a very responsible person a very intelligent person if you are not responsible if you are not intelligent child upbringing cannot be happen right child upbringing cannot be happen so uh, the idea of hh H. munro is that if you are an adult if you are a parent please make sure to learn the child upbringing methods providing punishments blaming and doing all other sorts of physical punishments won't help right this is the major idea so he as a small boy suffocated da api katha karani eya kuda daruwek vidiyata hariyata duk pinda eyage kuda eyage lama avadi in his childhood he suffocated a lot so as a result of that he he never wanted to give that suffocation to another child that is why he wanted to give some kind of uh, moral message to the audience in a much more creative manner by selecting literature when we read this type of stories we will realize when it comes to certain adults when it comes to certain parents their behavior when it comes to child upbringing is something very rude something very rude and something very wrong right so i hope that we have discussed all these difficult words in uh, para number 4 so his boy cousin and girl cousin and his quite uninteresting younger brother were to be taken to the jagbrof sands that afternoon and he was to stay at home jagbrof beach is the place that they are hoping to go why nicholas is inside the house because nicholas is in disgrace at the breakfast table he did something wrong to he to his aunt as a result of that aunt is giving a punishment his cousin aunt who is insisted by an unwarranted stretch of imagination so it clearly shows that she is lack of imagination unwarranted lack of imagination in styling herself is his aunt also had hastily invented the jagbrof expedition in order to impress on nicholas the delights that he had justified forfeited by his disgraceful conduct at breakfast table so it says that this is not something actually pre planned this is this this was actually planned very quickly in order to give some kind of mental torture manasikawa eyata danduwan karanna anith lamai yanawa oyata inna wenawa oya karapu naraka wede nisa so that is the mental torture no physical torture in here aunt is not taking a, a what do you call a, a cane 
and continuously hitting there is no physical uh, what do you call punishment but mental punishment can be seen mental torture mentally he is torturing right she is torturing this boy all the other children will enjoy you don't know what kind of uh, uh, happy and frolic time period that they will have there unfortunately you can't do it was her habit this is not the first time my dear students you can get some idea about the aunt it was her habit whenever one of the children fell from grace whenever a child did this kind of a mistake she actually organized this type of events right to improvise something of a festival nature she will organize that in a festival festive nature because then that particular child will be so much regretful he will be so much regretful because because of my actions i could not participate for this event that is the idea right so something of festival nature from which the offender would be rigorously debarred right rigorously debarred means he was uh, con completely he was not given a chance all the difficult words i have given don't get upset about that if all the children seemed collectively they were suddenly informed of a circus in a neighboring town a circus of unrivaled merit uncounted elephants to which but for their depravity they would have been taken that very day if all the children collectively do some mistake now here Nicholas has done the mistake. Can you understand? Only one child. Just imagine that all the children did some kind of a mistake. Then she will explain about the beautiful circus, right? What kind of circus that they are going to miss, right? All the children will not be taken there. So she will explain about the beautiful circus. But the problem is she could not explain the beauty of the circus. This clearly shows us again her imagination about her imagination, which is very poor. So in order to give mental torture for all the children. she will explain about that beautiful circus in front of them but the problem is she didn't have enough vocabulary enough diction enough words to explain the beauty of the place because she does not have that imagination the power of imagination which nicholas possesses right which is possessed by nicholas right so whenever all the children did some kind of a mistake she she tried to give a very beautiful explanation about the circus but nobody will understand her explanations because uh she is not that much imaginative where yeah, it explains unrivaled merit uncounted elephants she doesn't even know how many elephants are there in the circus she doesn't know what kind of characters are there in the circus she doesn't have any idea so she tries to impress people she tries to impress children actually but it is not going to happen so uh, hh munro clearly shows that what kind of unimaginative nature is possessed by this aunt can you please tell me did we write all these difficult words did we write the explanation as well can you please pass me a message anyone who participated for the class last week did we write this red color explanation shall we move on from there right okay thank you so much puda right so we are moving to the glossary did you write the glossary all the difficult words that you uh, that you saw in the previous paragraph did you write all the difficult words are ah, right okay please make sure to write down the difficult words tactician what is the word tactician so tactician can be identified as a person who plans something a very good planner right so nicholas can be taken as a tactician so you can write down all the difficult words are huh? very important even in your school your teacher will not explain these difficult words she will definitely ask from you to write down by referring to a dictionary so in order to understand this lesson please make sure to write down all the difficult words that you come across favorable favorable what is the meaning of the word favorable good for something and make it it likely to be successful or have an advantage favorable unwarranted so we found that word in the previous paragraph if you check the paragraph you can find out this word right unwarranted which refers to unwelcome and done without good reason unwarranted refers to unwelcome and done without good reason styling what do you mean by styling here you can find this word as well in the previous paragraph to give a little to describe oneself in a specified manner so styling refers to to give a title to describe oneself in a specified manner hastily invented hastily invented refers to create or imagine quickly so the aunt has hastily invented the jagbrof expedition she didn't have any plan to uh, what do you call execute something like that but soon she understood that she has to give some kind of punishment to nicholas so as a result of that it was hastily invented right create to uh, what do you call built or else imagined very quickly expedition expedition means journey make for special purpose that is what we call expedition right expedition aunt is not a good tactician very good very good that is what i want to explain but nicholas is a very good tactician 
Nicholas can be identified as a very good tactician where his planning is super. Right? We are going to discuss about his characteristics. Then we will discuss about his quality of planning. Right? He is a very good planner and he executes the plan quite cleverly. This is what we can realize. Right? So H. H. Munro always wanted to show the beauty of Nicholas's character. What he always said is that Nicholas can be identified as a character who didn't have, who doesn't have any flaws. Any flaws, right? He didn't see any mistakes in Nicholas's character. So as a result of that, it is a little bit difficult for us to believe uh, in Nicholas's character because Nicholas is presented as a boy who didn't do, who, who doesn't do any, any mistake. That type of people cannot be seen in the society. When it comes to in literature, we don't find that type of people. But here, Nicholas's character is something like that. Because the major idea, major intention that H.H. H. Munro had is to glorify the kids, not to glorify the adults, right? To glorify the kids because uh, he lost his childhood due to uh, his tyrannical aunt called Augusta and uh, his grandmother. As a result of that, when he became a young boy, he wanted to create the impact inside the people's mind, right? You have to take care of your children. They are full of curiosity. You have to provide the answers for them. You have to enrich their imagination and vocabulary as well as their cognitive abilities. That is the only way that you can develop your child's personality. That is what he believed. Whatever the things that he didn't get in his life, as a writer, he wanted to get, he wanted those things to uh, received by uh, other people. He wanted those things to be received by other people. This is what we can realize. Hastily invented, I have explained. Expedition means journey made for special purpose. Expedition, journey made for a special purpose. Impress means to affect deeply or strongly in mind. Impress, you are trying to impress girls. Uh, sometimes you will shout in the class, so you will do a number of things in order to impress someone to get the attraction. That is the word called impress. Forfeit means to have something taken away from a person as a punishment. So forfeit, that word is there. Please make sure to write down the meaning as well. Improvise means to do, make, to do or make uh, something owing to an unexpected situation or sudden need. Improvise, right? You can do some kind of a uh, new idea, right? Improvising some shots. Now, if you take Tilakaratna uh, Dilshan has improvised uh, his Dil scope, right? If you are a cricket fan, you may have heard about Tilakaratna Dilshan. He has actually invented the shot called Dil scope, right? That is actually a really good improvisation, right? He actually improvised. He actually, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, gave a new name uh, to a new cricket shot, right? That is what we call improvise. To do or make something owing to an unexpected situation, no sudden need. Right? So that is the idea of improvise. Did you write this one? Shall we move on to the next part? Did you complete? Did you complete all the difficult words? Hurry up. Right. So when he has completed, what about the others? So when he has completed all the difficult words, I have explained to you all the difficult words and make sure to remember. Uh, this entire lesson will be done with all the difficult words. If you miss a single word, please make sure to ask. Right? I'm not going to give you all the words, but whatever the difficult words that you come across in order to understand the lesson, I will give that. Then you will get a complete understanding about the uh, lesson. Right? Okay, right. Most of you have finished, so we will move on to the next part. I hope that you guys have complete. Is there anyone who is still writing? Is there anyone who is still writing? No, right. Okay, so we'll move on to the next part. Right, we have another set of words here. You can write down. Offender. Offender. One who hurts the feelings of others or cause displeasure. Right? Displeasure. Right? One who hurts the feelings of others or causes displeasure. Who is known as offender. Verdical. Rigorously. Carefully, thoroughly and exactly. Rigorously. Right? That is the idea. Carefully, thoroughly and exactly. Debarred. Debarred. ED is actually past participle. They have taken only the word. Uh, debar. Official prevent from doing something. Right? Official prevent from doing something. Right? So that is what we call debar. Uh, here it is used as debar. Uh, depravity means the state of being morally bad. If you are morally bad, if you are physically good, sometimes you may be morally bad. That is what we call depravity. Look for means trying to find. Uh, escape against means rub roughly against a surface and get hurt or injured. Scramble to climb over a rough uh, or steep surface. To cry loudly in pain shows or anger. In good spirits, a state of being filled with pride and joy. Right? So these are the 
elation right these are the meanings that i have given which are relevant to the uh, chapter number 3 uh, i think chapter number 3 we are we have been doing chapter number 3 and 4 or 2 and 3 if i am not mistaken you can use these difficult words and you can write down all the difficult words it will be very much important to enrich your vocabulary and sometimes it will help you to write answers as well right so hurry up and finish it off please pass me a message hurry up Are you students? I am waiting for your response. When please you can respond. Uh, I will move on to the next slide. Are you? right i hope you guys have completed right okay thank you so much we will move to the next part right now we are moving to paragraph number 4 sorry number 5 a few decent tears were looked for on the part of nicholas when the moment for the departure of the expedition arrived whatever said and done a few decent tears actually came from his eyes right a few decent tears came which means that nicholas is also a child even though he is so much matured than the adults my dear students try to understand he is also a child so he got some kind of upset he was little bit disappointed about the action so he was sad but he never showed that that is the most important part he was upset he was disappointed about the action when all the other children are enjoying in the jagroff beach and you are inside the house right definitely you will get some kind of sadness there is no doubt about that so that is why the writer says a few decent tears were looked for on the part of nicholas when the moment for the departure of the expedition arrived so nicholas is also a human being even though he is mature than the other children what we can realize here is that he is also a human being right so the so the writer explains us right he was little bit upset but nevertheless right mental punishments are also harsher than physical punishments 
for a kid like Nicholas. Not only for a kid like Nicholas, especially for all the children. Last week also I explained you in front of a class, if I humiliate a boy, if I humiliate a girl, what will happen? I am not going to touch them. I am not going to take a ruler and I am not going to hit them. But if I humiliate them in front of the class, that torture, that punishment is more terrible than any physical punishment. Can you understand? That is actually affecting to his mentality, right? He will get some kind of idea that I am a kind of a fool, right? Am I a fool, right? Or, or I can't do anything, right? In front of the whole class, he humiliated me, right? There are certain teachers who dislike that. There are certain teachers who can who, who do who do that type of things. So we should never do that. This is the moral message actually given by the writer. Please make sure to understand that, right? Thank you for your comment, Puta. I really appreciate it. A few decent years were looked for the part of Nicholas when the moment for the departure of the expedition arrived. Now all the children are getting ready. So Nicholas was a little bit upset, but he never showed that. As a matter of fact, however, all the crying was done by his girl cousin who scraped her knee rather painfully against the step of the carriage as she was scrambling in. Now what happened? Nicholas identified that even though children are going to enjoy, the girl cousin has scraped her knee. Right? Scraped. That girl is crying. So she has scraped her knee. So obviously Nicholas knew that this girl is not going to enjoy. Because you can realize that when she went to the beach, when she was, uh, what do you call, uh, walking and running here and there, if that sand touches the knees, you can clearly understand what kind of pain will come. You can clearly understand what kind of pain will actually be there. So as a result of that, Nicholas identified this girl is not going to enjoy here. Right? So he identified. So we have another set of difficult words here. These words are actually relevant to the next paragraph. So, but please make sure to write down. Soy distant. We have the word soy distant. Soy distant refers to so-called, pretended or would be aunt. Soy distant aunt means in English, so-called aunt. Then we have the word glorious. Glorious means very beautiful and impressive. These words will be related to the, this paragraph as well as the next, next couple of paragraphs as well. Huh? So all the difficult words I have explained, please make sure to write down the meanings. Chuckle means a laugh uh, quietly. Aspirity means the fact of being rough or severe, especially in the way you speak or treat somebody. We can clearly understand the aunt's behavior is something like that. Loftily, showing a belief that you are worth than other people. Flawlessness. Flawlessness means without having any flaws. That means you are perfect. Now here, our H.H. H. Mundro has actually uh, constructed uh, Nicholas's character as a flawless character without having any flaw flaws. That type of characters cannot be seen in this world. Obstinacy. Obstinacy, I'm sorry. Obstinacy, a new word. Refusing to change your opinions, way of behaving. When other people try to persuade you to do something, you say that you can't do be like that. You are not going to do like that. Whenever other people are trying to persuade, you are not agreeing their ideas. So that is what we call obstinacy. Then we have considerable. The idea is substantial. Then we have the word determined. Determined means firm or unwavering. You are not going to be shaken. So all these difficult words will help you to understand the story much more better. So please make sure to write down all the difficult words. Hurry up. All these vocabulary words will be relevant to you in this paragraph or else in the next paragraph. Now, what happens in paragraph number five? Even though Nicholas was a little bit upset about the expedition, he understood, he realized that the girl cousin will never enjoy the expedition because she is already crying. At that time period, she is already crying. So Nicholas understood that I don't know how many people are going to enjoy this Jagbrof beach as, as my aunt suggested, but now I am pretty sure that this girl is not going to enjoy. So he's a very much vigilant character. Right? He is very much careful with his audience and as well as his uh, people who lives in the same house, even though he is a small boy. There are some good qualities that we can discuss when it comes to Nicholas and make sure to remember there are some bad qualities as well. Right? But unfortunately, the, the writer has not actually highlighted whatever the bad qualities actually represented from Nicholas's character because Nicholas is taken as the hero. Right? That is the idea. So hurry up and write down. All the difficult words, please write down. All right, Chirani has completed. Others, hurry up.
right so most of the students have finished so we will move on now what happened here all the children are getting ready to the jackbrof beach they are going to enjoy the expedition under the uh, advices of uh, aunt aunt has provided this kind of expedition not to give some kind of enjoyment for children aunt did not have that kind of idea the sole purpose of aunt is to give some kind of punishment to nicholas she thought that nicholas will suffer mentally when all the other children actually enjoy in the jackbrof beach in order to give that mental punishment she has hastily uh, organized this kind of an event that is what happened para number 6 and 7 together please pay your attention how she did howl how she did howl so who is she here she means the girl cousin now the girl cousin is crying how she did howl said nicholas cheerfully now nicholas is happy about that because whatever the opportunity is actually missed by nicholas will not will should not be taken by other people so definitely as i have explained to you this girl cousin will definitely suffer as the party drove off without any of the elation of high spirits that should have characterized it by uttering how did she howl in cheerful manner since he knew for sure that his cousins would not enjoy themselves at the sands of jackbrof so even though aunt wanted to take them to the jackbrof beach neither the girl cousin nor the bobby um what do you call enjoyed this trip or else enjoyed this expedition we will go to para number 6 7 as well she will soon get over that so aunt heard that aunt heard that howling howling means crying right aunt heard that then what is the what is the uh, reference actually made by the aunt said the soy distant aunt it will be a glorious afternoon for racing about over those beautiful sands how they will enjoy themselves now you can clearly understand this aunt is trying to get the attraction of nicholas see the diction used by the aunt it will be a glorious afternoon this evening will be a glorious afternoon then nicholas will feel ayyo i have missed that glorious afternoon right soon racing about all uh, over those beautiful sands how they will enjoy themselves so aunt thought that nicholas will feel i yo i am going to miss all this enjoyment i am going to miss all this enjoyment because of some actions done by me right so aunt wanted to give that impression to nicholas can you understand that is the impression that aunt wanted to create in nicholas's mind so we can clearly understand that what kind of punishment is actually organized by the aunt right so in para number 6 and para number 7 we can clearly understand what kind of effort is done by the aunt in order to put nicholas in sadness in suffocation right mental suffering right so we can clearly understand what kind of person the aunt is she tries to punish children with withholding enjoyment this is what we can realize when it comes to her character however on the other side of the problem his aunt says the contrary how they will enjoy themselves even though they are howling now even though they are crying now they will definitely enjoy once they go into the sea once they go into the beach they will definitely enjoy now they are crying now they are howling but the reality is right soon after they enter to the jackbrof beach they will enjoy so aunt is telling these uh, monologues or else all these ideas because then aunt thought that nicholas will hear them nicholas will hear them and nicholas will get upset that is the punishment udaharana meka therin don mama kiyene right she is obsessed over punishments right then uh, our parents are also doing the same thing but it is a mental torture now if you have a uh, if you if you have an if you are the elder one and uh, what do you call uh, you have a younger brother sometimes your parents will also do the same thing right i will definitely give this to you not to your brother right i will not give anything to your brother everything will be yours likewise they try to create some kind of mental torture i have heard sometimes that type of uh, dialogues between children and kids so according to hh munro he says that that is also kind of a mental torture whether you have, unwillingly you are doing a mental torture you should never do that type of you should never give that type of punishments to children right because children are immature inexperienced ones so you are matured experienced ones so you have to understand the behavior of children sometimes certain teachers they can't bear as a result of that they uh, what do you call punish the children they physically punish the children right as a result of that i am not going to tell that punishment is something bad but we have to agree with the fact that we are living in the 21st century 
where we are dealing with uh, what you call uh, different types of attitudes when it comes to punishments right we are not going to enjoy these punishments with withholding enjoyment right we know that students are suffering right it is not good but students also have to learn something right because the discipline is something that we have to always pay here attention pay our, pay our attention here whatever said and done even nhh munro said that nicolas is the hero we have to realize that there are certain weaknesses in nicolas's character as well right some kind of actions done by the nicolas cannot be uh, cannot be pardoned cannot be pardoned right so he is not a good character but however the moral message behind the poem is that as children you should learn child upbringing first right otherwise you are not going to enjoy your life that is the idea given here right so uh, i hope that you guys have completed hurry up and write down we have discussed chapter number 6 and chapter number 7 if you have finished pass me a message right i hope that you guys have completed if you have any questions you can ask please uh, chamodi charuka dulmi um uh, fernando is this the same person uh, who left the group who is that fernando are you the same fernando who left the group who is that uh, vishwa fernando is that you no sir indika fernando all ah, right okay so i thought the same person right so if you have uh, any questions you can ask now up to now we know the story nicolas tries to tell that just look at your kids nandi maava trip ek ekkan gi nathu unata kaman ne me lamai diya podda balanna me danis deka tuwala vela me lamaya kaya gahano me lamaya me lamaya berihan deno howling then howling howling karanni samanyen alamai wurukey oni are howling you see the word she is howling then aunt says that ah she will soon get to wariya yo wariya she will soon get to that wagen ittara hitanna denna she will soon get to that said the soy distant ah soy distant so called i have given all the difficult words soy distant ah aba podi dewalle boruwa ne yadanni yawa hariyai it will be a glorious afternoon for racing about over those beautiful sands how they will enjoy themselves wow right they will all enjoy themselves they will all uh, entertain themselves but you can't do like that you will have to take the punishment you will stay inside the house so we can understand she is obsessed with punishments lamaita danduwan dila pissu hadila inne obsessed with punishments so this is the message given by hh munro you should you should give punishments to children there is no doubt about that children should be punished otherwise they don't learn any lesson lamaita danduwan nodime inne kiyala kiyanne right they should give some punishments but there are there are certain methods that you have that you can punish children right there are certain methods the ultimate purpose the ultimate motive of giving a punishment is to correct his mistake whatever the mistake that he has done our ultimate purpose is to correct that mistake not to torture him mentally as teachers as as adults as parents our ulterior motive is to okay take him to the correct path we will correct his mistake and the next day he will not do the same mistake right our motive should not be to give some kind of punishment to that particular boy or a girl with lot of vengeance right so this aunt wants to take vengeance right she is full of uh, anger right so she is ready to take the revenge right the paliganna balagin inne mokada ara breakfast table eke siddha vecha deet eka paliganna balan inne now she wants to take some kind of revenge from this person that is why i said antagonist and protagonist antagonist kiyala kiyanne villain protagonist means the hero so nicolas is known as the hero right i hope our students can understand right explanation para number 5 6 and 7 so you can write down this one the entire explanation i have given here to punish nicolas for his disgraceful behavior nicolas's aunt decides the other children's good behavior should be rewarded with a spontaneous beach trip what do you mean by spontaneous spontaneous means not pre planned spontaneous spontaneous refers to not planned pre previous api singalen kiyana meka na naisargika not pre planned spontaneous right you can write down all the difficult words 
not pre-planned. This trip is not pre-planned. Right? And aunt has not given this chance to other children to get the real enjoyment. Me lamai ve attra me ekang yanne me lamai ke na tiye na mara adre ke na nimi. Lamai ve ekang yanne me plan ne ke mo kotha sa. It is a part of the plan. Otherwise, she didn't have real love and affection towards the other children. Other children also will have the same punishment. Right? Will have the same punishment. Right? The narrator comments that Nicholas's aunt is actually his cousin's aunt, right? Actually, his cousin's aunt, right? So distant aunt, but she acts and speaks as if she is his aunt too, right? She is actually behaving like that, so distant aunt, so cold. It is her habit to invent something fun to do whenever one of the children behaves badly, in order to exclude that child from the fun. So she did this not only for Nicholas but also for the other children as well. Try to understand. Nicholas's aunt hopes to see Nicholas crying as the others leave for the beach. So she expected Nicholas to cry, but only few decent tears actually came from his eyes. Nicholas did not cry. In fact, the only person who cries in his uh, cries is his cousin. She scrapes her knee against the step against the step as she is scrambling into the carriage. As the carriage drives off with none of the high spirits that is normally would nicholas cheerfully reflects on how loudly his cousin is howling in pain his aunt says she will soon get over it and that it will be a glorious afternoon for running about on the beach so we can clearly understand the suffocation the pain the agony is not actually taken into consideration by the aunt right so you you cannot be like that for nicholas definitely she is an aunt then nicholas tadi yaar enda wenni But uh, the girl cousin and the boy cousin definitely she will be the mother. Definitely she will be the mother. Then meya amma ni, poya andaran la meya ge amma meya, right? Definitely she is the mother. But can you can you realize that she does not pay any attention to the needs and wants of children? The ape amma la nang kohom. When we are about to cry, when we are crying, when we are upset, they will naturally get to know about that and they will try their level best to provide some possible answers. Ape amma la daatla nang ge man. අපි අඳනවා දැක්ක ගමන් පුළුවන් තරම් ඒගොල්ලෝ බලන්නේ උත්තරයක් හොයලා දෙන්න අපිව අඳන එක නවත්තා so that is what we call child upbringing right they have a lot of experience right they have a lot of experience but according to hh H. munro some parents some adults some teachers they are not experienced right even though they are uh, much more elder than these people right when it comes to their knowledge when it comes to their experience they are in a kind of a very low position that is what hh H. munro tries to explain here the vena amma kenek nam poddak langata gihilla if it is a different kind of a mother she will definitely go towards this girl and she will try to provide some medicine or some treatments and she will try to uh, pamper the child ane puthe andan depa likewise right but this aunt she didn't even care about her children she didn't even care about her children right so we can clearly understand what kind of mentality what kind of attitude is possessed by this aunt right i don't know in real life you can find the, what do you call this kind of people but however but we can understand one thing here that is we can clearly come to a conclusion uh, what kind of suffocation is actually undergone by uh, this particular person when he was a child that is quite sure right that is quite obvious we can clearly understand hh H. bundro may have suffocated a lot right may have suffocated a lot whatever the personal experience that he has undergone is actually included into this a uh, short story if i am not mistake he did not have a happy childhood so in almost all the short stories he tries to give some kind of a message not only for the kids but also for the adults right you have to you have to protect these children punishments verbal punishments humiliating physical punishments won't work right you have to save them you have to protect them and the ultimate purpose of giving punishments should be to take him to the correct path we should not punish children in order to get some kind of uh, enjoyment right entertainment right we should not do like that because children are kind of a precious asset kind of a precious asset that we have right apita thiyena vatkamak lamai children na children can be identified as an asset right one day they will become young people and they will take the responsibility of the country so if they are educated right even though we did not get a proper country at least our future generation can enjoy kind of a country where we don't have this corruption and all the political instability and other problems so we should help them we should support them right but unfortunately in our country most of the adults are not ready to do that right most of the adults are having that ego 
they don't like to take the ideas they don't like to take the uh, whatever the good thoughts actually presented by these young people or else children right so even when you are having a conversation inside your house with another person sometimes you may give a valuable idea but your father and mother will say that this is not your time period to talk you are just a small girl go to your room and read a book they don't even check your idea they don't even bother to find out what is the idea actually given by you they don't care so that type of careless attitude we should never give uh, we should never give to children right we should give our 100% if you can't give that 100% it is better to not to have your not to have a child that is the idea right so uh, the narrator comments that nicholas's aunt is actually his cousin's aunt but she acts and speaks as she if she is his aunt too it is her habit to invent something fun to do whenever one of the children behaves badly in order to exclude that from a child from the fun nicholas's aunt hopes to see nicholas crying as the others leave for the beach in fact the only person who cries is in his cousin she scrapes her knee against the step as she is scrambling into the carriage as she, as the carriage drives off with none of the high speeds that it normally would nicholas cheerfully reflects on how loudly his cousin's uh, cousin is um, howling in pain his aunt says that she will soon get over it and then it will be a glorious afternoon for uh, running about on the beach right did you finish this part shall we move on to the next part can you please pass me a message hurry up right so entire explanation i have given here right we will go to the next part right i hope you minoli can you understand please pass me a message right i hope you can understand the right okay okay uh, ishan you can write down lama ekwa hariyata hadana vidiya gena thamai meke kiyala denne e kiyane samahara demaupiyo samahara wedi hitiyo hitanawa e gollo hama weleema hari lamaya kiyana eka ahanne lamayata awasthawak denne bohoma sarala singhalen obata pahadli karanawa nan me me keti kathawi kiyanne e gena demaupiyo unahama samahara welawata lamayita ehunkan denno on guruwaru unahama samahara welawata lamayita ehunkan denno on right apite api ehema ehunkan denna lasti nattam e galanta e dewal kiyanna kenek ne if we are not ready to accept they are ideas and whatever the uh, messages that they want to impart if we are not ready for that to whom that they are going to tell all these things kaata the me deval kiyan kiyanna kenek naha me galanta kaw right then they select what you call a boyfriend or a girlfriend at the end of the day what happens they will ruin their lives e lange jeevithe egol nathi karagan so first thing that you have to listen to your child if any child tell you something as an adult i am the adult here so in my perspective you have to listen very carefully they are still children they are still children even though they are actually telling you number of bad things they are using bad words or vulgar words or else they are joking in my school they are continuously doing that to me right so uh, the reason may be because they are they may be young but as as even though they are doing like that you should not be angry we can't be angry actually because we are adults so we have to understand their perspective their mentality and their age right then we have to realize that why these people are behaving like that because of the changes in hormones right different types of hormones that actually uh, takes place in your in your body there are lot of reasons my dear students goda kheedu thiyena lamai wenasse ekama deyak kisa kiyala apita kiyanna ba there can be lot of reasons right the aunt is a wet blanket a spoiled sport with a narrow mind exactly right she is completely spoiled so the punishment is not the only reason that is what we have to understand okay right we are coming to paragraph number 8 bobby won't enjoy himself much and he won't race much either said nicholas with a grim chuckle his boots are hurting him they are too tight this is something very important that we can pay our attention yeah he says bobby won't enjoy himself much and he won't race much either right so he explains that now first he explained about the situation of the girl kasi now he tries to understand about the now he tries to explain about bobby's behavior bobby is another boy who suffocated because of tight shoes said nicholas with grim chuckle his boots are hurting him they are too tight right so bobby will never enjoy in the jagger of beach because he can't walk he can't run he will not do any sport because now itself he is suffering why didn't he tell me they were hurting asked the aunt with some asperity so aunt actually asked the question why didn't he tell me uh, they were hurting asked the aunt with some asperity the kiyanda vai lameyo 
බුද්ධ ගේ හිරයි නම් අපිට කියන්න බෑ මොකද කියන්නද විටි he told you twice but you were not listening you often don't listen when we tell you important things please highlight that quotation my dear students one of the most important quotations when it comes to the uh, lesson very powerful quotation please highlight that he told you twice i am going to highlight that in green color as you can see on the screen right he told you twice but you weren't listening you often don't listen when we tell you important things this quotation clearly shows us the major theme of the short story so nicholas clearly right explains the fact that he told you twice as an adult you don't pay attention to our needs and wants he told you twice but you did not listen you were not bothered to accept right so as a result of that what happened now he is still suffering right he told you twice but you are not ready to listen you are not showing any sympathy any empathy any uh, what do you call um, any connection towards us when we tell you something important right you always tell that we are lying we are telling some kind of uh, what do you call jokes or something like that but we are not doing like that sometimes we are really serious but you don't recognize that you are not to go into the gooseberry garden said the aunt changing the subject again very important now what is the subject the subject is about the expedition to the jagbrof beach what is the subject the subject is okay these innocent children are suffering so without giving an answer for the suffocative children without giving answer to the condition of children the aunt actually changed the topic again what is the topic actually given by her she said that you are not go you are not to go into the gooseberry garden so this is actually something irrelevant you should not talk about the gooseberry garden here you should talk about the problem of the boy bobby right but instead of paying that attention she gave some kind of different answer the answer actually the response given by her is that you are not to go into the gooseberry garden so nicholas didn't even ask about the gooseberry garden nicholas didn't even ask about the gooseberry garden but the aunt said that you are not to go into the gooseberry garden said the aunt change in the subject why not demanded nicholas can you understand his cognitive abilities he is ready to ask questions he has that logical ability he is ready to ask questions why not demanded nicholas because you are in disgrace said the aunt loftily all these words i have given now said the aunt loftily because you are in disgrace you have done something really bad as a result of that you can't enter to the gooseberry garden so why did the aunt particularly use the word gooseberry garden that is the problem that is what we have to pay our attention right he could have she could have uh, what do you call mention any other name but she specifically used the name gooseberry garden you can go anywhere that you like but you can't go for the gooseberry garden when, when she tells like that what what actually happened in uh, nicholas's mind is curiosity why is that when aunt said you must not enter to that i should enter and see what is there that is what we call logical thinking of an or logical thinking of a young boy right so he understood that okay if my aunt is not yeah if my um, aunt is telling that there is something i should not enter to the gooseberry garden which means that there is something fishy in gooseberry garden there is something fishy i should check that so he got some kind of curious can you understand so aunt also wanted him to do the same thing so when he entered to the gooseberry garden aunt can go there and aunt can capture him then aunt have some kind of uh, evidence then aunt can definitely punish him without having any uh, evidence you can't punish now even at the breakfast table nobody knew that nicholas is the person who put the frog into the bread and milk nobody knew about that so there were no evidence as a result of that he was actually uh, got the freedom right so uh, but here uh, what do you call what we can realize is that aunt is trying Uh, her level best to put nicholas in danger but it is not going to happen so uh, from this quotation what we can clearly realize is that how aunt is actually giving some kind of persuasion right some kind of a support um, what do you call to nicholas by saying that you have to enter to the enter to the gooseberry garden you should not enter to the gooseberry garden this gives some kind of motivation to nicholas to enter and see what is going on there so shall we move on to the next part Nicholas gives a grim chuckle and says Bobby won't enjoy running because his boots are too tight and are hurting him. The aunt asks why Bobby don't uh, why, why Bobby didn't tell her 
nicola says he told you twice but she won't uh, she was not listening uh, he adds the he adds that she he adds that she often doesn't uh, listen when they tell her important things she doesn't pay any attention towards these things because those things may be that may be not that much important to her right so did you write this part shall we move on to the next part can you please pass me a message she changed the topic as she realized the criticism leveled against her and that nicola says poking fun out of her is that right absolutely right suvani your answer is absolutely right i don't have to comment on that your answer is perfect your answer is perfect right there is the idea here did you write this one shall we move on to the next slide so we have discussed a lot we have discussed until chapter number 8 arya we have to, we have lot to discuss each and every chapter we have discussed right so it is important to pay your attention right okay right para number 9 is there anyone who is still writing right para number 9 nicolas did not admit the flawlessness of the reasoning flawlessness means without having any weaknesses he felt perfectly capable of being in this place and in a gooseberry garden at the same moment his face took on an expression of considerable obstinacy it was clear to his aunt that he was determined to get into the gooseberry garden only she only as she remarked to herself because i have told him he is not to do not to right so aunt actually explained about this uh, shop right um, right so the aunt changes the subject she tells him he isn't allowed to go uh, go into the gooseberry garden while he is in disgrace nicolas understands why she forbids him he would be perfectly happy to be grounded if allowed in the garden he assumes an expression of stubbornness his aunt understands that nicolas will uh, now try to get into the gooseberry garden if only because she has told him not to not to do so right now definitely uh, what do you call rithik definitely this person um, the aunt got the idea that okay now what i have to do is that this punishment is not going to work so i should motivate this boy to enter to the gooseberry garden that is why she says right now ah, okay you can go anywhere that you like but don't go to the gooseberry garden so aunt want to motivate this boy so nicolas motivated nicolas motivated nicolas understood there is something fishy that is why this aunt is actually motivating me to go to the gooseberry garden i will go to the gooseberry garden but i will never get caught to my aunt that is the ultimate purpose that he had he will definitely enter to the gooseberry garden but he never had that uh, but he never wanted to get caught if he gets caught what will happen he will get punishments so he want to enter to the goose he wanted to enter to the gooseberry garden and that is what he is going to do here right uh, and this idea is actually given by the aunt herself Uh, so she never thought that nicolas will do such thing that is the idea right so hurry up and write down did you finish this part shall we move to the next part please pass me a message if you have finished
okay i hope that up to now the story is okay for you so we will move on from there right uh nicholas is uh, what do you call uh, but even though aunt said that they are punishments they were not punishments to nicholas now the first one puta we can clearly understand that uh, aunt is trying to take all the other children to the jagbrof beach and nicholas will be alone inside the house that is the first punishment second punishment is that okay you you can go anywhere that you like you can enjoy yourself you can go anywhere that you like but make sure to remember you should not enter to the gooseberry garden or else the lumber room the idea behind here is that you should go there by saying that you should not go there aunt indirectly suggests that you should go there when you go there definitely i can capture you and then i have evidence then i can punish you. so her ulterior motive right whatever the motive that she suggested in her in her explanation we can clearly understand she wanted nicholas to enter there no hard and fast rule you should go there then only i can capture you that is the idea right so two punishments are given but they were not taken as punishments they were taken as challenges this is why nicholas is so special right they were taken as challenges they were not taken as punishments very important right right so here we have some difficult words to go through so you can write down the difficult words hurry up these difficult words will help you to understand the next paragraph so please make sure to write down right let's check these words first right artichokes a round vegetable with a lot of leaves the bottom part of the leaves and the inner part of the artichoke can be eaten when cooked right you can search that uh, you can find a lot of pictures on the internet trivial means unimportant small or minor forbidden means prohibited or not allowed paradise means heaven or utopia utopia refers to some island that you have never seen 
but you love to see something that you have never seen. Immense means huge or massive or vast. Concentration means focus, attentiveness, right? So these are the words that will be help, that will be uh, so much helpful for you when you are going through the next paragraph. Right, so we are moving to, I hope that you guys have completed, right? Uh, now we know what, what is going on. Now aunt understood that Nicholas did not get any upset mood soon after children left the Jackbroff beach, which means that she failed. The first punishment, she failed, right? Nicholas did not get uh, any, uh, what do you call, upset mood, right? Nicholas did not cry, right? Nicholas did not mentally torture, right? Mentally torture, mental torture is not actually accepted by Nicholas. So that, that is what we can see here. And now she has got the second attempt. The second attempt is that she is motivating Nicholas to go to the gooseberry garden. Even though she said that not to go, by using that phrase, she is using the idea. She is trying to say him that you must go there, then I can capture you. That is the second. It is not actually a punishment. It is a plan. It is a plan actually made by aunt, right? So Nicholas will definitely enter to the gooseberry garden because of the curiosity, right? When he entered to the gooseberry garden, aunt can capture him and aunt can give all the punishments. That is the idea behind this, right? Now the gooseberry garden had two doors by which it might be entered. And once a small person like Nicholas could slip in there, he could effectually disappear from view amid the masking growth of artichokes, raspberry canes, and fruit bushes. So the writer has given us a clear description about this uh, gooseberry garden, right? The gooseberry garden had two doors by which it might be entered. And once a small person like Nicholas could slip in there, he could effectually disappear from view amid the masking growth of artichokes, raspberry canes, and fruit bushes. Not like an adult, a small boy like Nicholas, when he entered to the gooseberry garden, there is a chance of escaping because there are a lot of other bushes and all the other trees. So he can hide and he can escape from that place. So a lot of chances are there. That is the explanation given, right? The aunt had many other things to do that afternoon, but aunt did not forget the idea, right? He knew that Nicholas will definitely enter to the gooseberry garden, right? So she is like a sniper, like a sniper. She is actually very much watchful towards Nicholas's behavior, right? The aunt had many other things to do that afternoon, but she spent an hour or two in trivial gardening operations among flower beds and shrubberies. When she could watch the two doors that led to the forbidden paradise, she was a woman of few ideas with immense powers of concentration. Right now, what happens here, even though she had a lot of other work to do, she was working, she was doing trivial gardening operations, very small work, very useless things, right? She was working there for more than two hours, right? For more than two hours, she is actually working there in order to check, in order to get some kind of evidence uh, about Nicholas's entering. So she was waiting for the Nicholas's arrival, right? Can you understand now what happens here? Right. So first and foremost, she uh, gave some kind of target to Nicholas indirectly. You should enter the gooseberry garden and see, I will definitely catch you. In order to catch Nicholas, now what she is doing here, we can understand she is waiting. She is waiting, doing these trivial gardening operations, right? She's doing very small work, very small work uh, during the garden. That work is actually useless, right? So you don't have to do that type of work, right? There is no work actually. But she engages in some kind of a work there and she wanted to check, she wanted to check the fact or the idea that, uh, okay, definitely this person will enter. Soon after he enters, I will definitely capture him. Furthermore, my dear students, please highlight this. Uh, I am going to highlight this part because it will be important for our lesson. So can you see that uh, this is known as the, whereas she could watch the two doors that led to the forbidden paradise. So it is a paradise, forbidden paradise. Forbidden means I, you have written the word, not given a chance, right? It's a forbidden paradise, which means that other children, other people have not seen this place. Nicholas is the only person who is going to enjoy this place. Nobody knows that what is there inside the lumber room, right? So it is a forbidden paradise. And moreover, the poet, so the uh, narrator says that she was a woman of few ideas, the characterization, with immense power of concentration right, with immense powers of concentration. So she had a really good concentration, 
but she had very few ideas. So it is a very good comparison between Nicholas's aunt and Nicholas. When it comes to Nicholas, Nicholas had a lot of ideas. Nicholas is a very imaginative boy, right? And he had a lot of cognitive abilities. When it comes to the aunt, she is a woman of few ideas, right? With immense power of concentration. She had a very powerful concentration. She concentrated, she waited, but Nicholas is much more powerful than her, right? Because without being noticed, Nicholas actually enters to the lumber room, right? Even though aunt is searching uh, for Nicholas, even though aunt is putting her watchful eye towards Nicholas's arrival, right? Whatever is said and done, Nicholas enters to the lumber room, right? That is his talent. He has got that pure talent. He's a very talented boy. He has got that pure talent. Can you understand? Let's go to the red color explanation. The narrator comments that there are two doors leading to the garden. Once someone as small as Nicholas slips in an entrance, he can be hidden from a view under artichokes, raspberry canes, and fruit bushes. As I have explained to you, there is a chance of surviving, but an adult cannot survive. He will be seen, he or she will be seen, but a boy can survive. A boy, small boy or small girl can survive. Although the aunt has lots to do, this afternoon, she spends an hour or two doing trivial gardening chorus. Chorus means the operations. From the flower beds and shrubberies, she can keep a watchful eye on the two doors leading to the forbidden garden. She is waiting. She is eagerly waiting, anxiously waiting for Nicholas's arrival. Soon after Nicholas enters the lumber room, she can go there and she can capture him and she can give all the punishments that she needed. Right? Because Nicholas has done some mistake, so she can come with an argument. I am giving you this punishment because you have done something like this. But without having evidence, you can't punish. Even for a child, if you don't have enough evidence, you can't, you can't do like that. Right? So she won't take some evidence, but Nicholas is much more creative than her. Much more intelligent than her. This is what H.H. Munro tries to show us. This is kind of a clear comparison between Nicholas's character and the aunt's character. Can you understand? A clear comparison. The entire story can be identified as a clear comparison. I hope you guys can understand. Right. So hurry up and write down. We have discussed a lot. Right. And last week, uh, we completed Vendor of Sweets. Uh, Wednesday class, we completed the first chapter. Right. All the difficult words we uh, discussed. So next week, Wednesday, we are going to start chapter number two. Uh, so please make sure to participate for the classes. This is the best option that you have because of this petrol problem and diesel problem and everything. Right, online classes will be the best option for you, right? And you can get the recordings as well. You can refer to them anytime that you like. So please make sure to participate for the classes and complete your notes, right? At the end of the day, you can't write for the exams that I had petrol problem. My mother waited in the queue to take gas. These things you cannot write for your exam, right? So please make sure to complete your work. Whatever the economic crisis actually occurred in the country, exams will be there definitely whatever the date that they have planned, right? So that is what I can say. Last year also, same thing happened for the advanced level and all levels as well. They enjoyed and they entertained with fun and frolic. At the end of the day, they had exams. Nobody asked that whether you have completed the syllabus, whether you went to school, whether you suffocated with Corona, whether you got Omicron. Nobody asked like that, right? You had exams, right? They had exams and they had to write, right? So exams are harder actually. Basically, it's very difficult. Literature paper is, it was very difficult for them, especially the novel, right? So please make sure to pay your attention. Some, some students are not participating for the classes. So if you are not participating, please make sure to get the recording and complete your notes. This is 100% your hard work, right? If you really work hard, you can achieve something. Otherwise, literature will be a very boring subject. I am 100% sure no teacher in the school, you can argue with me at any time, will explain all the difficult words and do this. The teacher will tell you the story and she will ask you to write down all the difficult words and she will ask you to write down the meanings. Now, I have done that for you, right? I have done that for you. So as a result of that, you can very easily study this, right? So with that thought, we are coming to the second part of the lumber room. Please check in your book uh, whether you are moving to the second part. Now, up to now, we have completed. Please take your book. It is in page number. Right, it is in page number 33. So we have started, we have actually finished uh, page number 31. We have uh, completed all the difficult words from page number 31, 32. Uh, and uh, uh, we came to page number 33. From there, 
uh, we are moving to the second part of the story lumber room second part now the first part is over right with that thought we are moving to the second part of the story right i am going to erase this right now this is the explanation to the second part we can write the uh, note next day the font is little bit small but you can refer to your book it is in page number this not uh, this passage is in page number 33 starting from nicholas second paragraph check whether you have that paragraph in your book check whether you have that paragraph nicholas in this one you have to have that right page number 33 do you have that puthe eka thiyena oda ogalange pottwala forbidden garden refers to the gooseberry garden right okay right so um, nicholas made one or two uh, sorties into the front garden wriggling his way with obvious stealth of purpose towards one or other of the doors but never able for a moment to evade the aunt's watchful eye as a matter of fact he had no intention of trying to get into the gooseberry garden but it was extremely convenient for him that his aunt should believe that he had very important now please make sure to highlight this this part is very important puta right where he says eyata kisima adahasak tibunne gooseberry garden ekata yanda habai aunt thamai eyawa motivate kare me balanta he says as a matter of fact please highlight he had no intention of trying to get into the gooseberry garden he never wanted to go there but it was extremely convenient for him that his aunt should believe that he had he is actually entering for the gooseberry garden not because of that he needs to enter he wants to prove the fact that okay you wanted me to enter to the gooseberry garden and you want to punish me right i will enter to the gooseberry garden because you said me to enter but i will never i will i will always escape you will never capture me can you understand that me la me ata yandu ubanawa tibun ne as a matter of fact he had no intention intention of trying to get into the gooseberry garden but it was extremely convenient for him that his aunt should believe that he had aunt is the person who actually motivated can you understand there are certain parents there are certain uh, adults who motivate children to do wrong things there are certain people right and they take some kind of enjoyment from that they take some kind of enjoyment of that right so this is the best example it was a belief that would keep on herself implop sentry duty for the greater part of the afternoon having thoroughly confirmed and fortified the suspicions nicholas slipped back into the house and rapidly put into execution a plan of action that had long germinated in his mind so this is not actually uh, done by him suddenly it was a long executed plan right he had a plan in his mind how to enter to the gooseberry garden not like the aunt now can you remember aunt actually organized that a uh, trip to the jackbrof beach as a pre as a as a what do you call something that is not properly planned right it is not properly planned but when it comes to nicholas nicholas enters to the gooseberry garden with a plan he had an execution plan right he worked on a plan he had a plan so he is working accordingly that is why he is known as a tactician by standing on a chair in the library one could reach a shelf on which reposed a fat important looking key so first and foremost he took the key right he used the chair in the library to do that so can you understand he has a plan he is working according to a plan so can you understand the difference between adults and children now right certain children now they are very smart they are very intelligent right by standing on a chair in the library one could reach a shelf on which reposed the fat important lo looking key the key was as important as it looked it was the instrument which kept the mysteries of the lumber room secure from unauthorized intrusion because of that key only nobody cannot enter to the lumber room because the door was locked that is the only object which kept each and every child uh, out of this lumber room which is uh, with from unauthorized intrusion only aunt can go to that place all the other children were prohibited of entering to the lumber room which opened the way only for aunts and such like privileged persons lumber room is actually only open for adults and privileged people not for the kids obviously Nicholas had uh, not had much experience of the art of fitting keys into keyholes and turning locks. Nicholas the calling kind of the art, door wall level, or the door wall door wall level, he experienced that. Tibu ne, he never had that kind of experience because he is a child. But for some days past, he had practiced with the key of the schoolroom door 
in order to enter to the gooseberry garden he practiced he planned he had the executed plan he had another plan to escape so can you understand what kind of person he is meva eka parata meya nikan karanne naha meya honda practice ekak karagena meva puhunu vela plan ekak athuwa karanne aanta wage hadisiyen karanne so you can clearly understand the difference between nicholas and the aunt the young generation and the old generation they always have a plan right so he since he has not done that previously he uh, he did that uh, to the school door with the key of the school door he did not believe in trusting too much luck and accident he did not believe in luck and accident because that is why he had a plan people who believe in luck they don't have plan they don't work hard right nicholas really worked hard and he had a plan so he worked the plan and he planned the work right that is what happens the key turn swiftly in the lock but it turned right so he actually opened the door the door opened and nicholas was in an unknown land right nicholas saw something that he has never seen in his entire life compared with which the gooseberry garden was a stale delight a, me a mere material pleasure right compared with which the gooseberry garden was a stale delight a mere material pleasure like when you compare with the gooseberry garden lambaru me something so much far more beautiful than that that is the idea given here, right so we will write the explanation next day uh please make sure to go through the recordings if you have any questions please make sure to ask please make sure to complete your notes up to now we have completed until paragraph number 11 please make sure to make a note there from next week onwards we are going to discuss all the difficult words that we have here right thank you so much for participating for the class we will meet next week and discuss the rest of the story thank you so much have a nice day thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir have a nice day